so in my last lecture i started uh, discussion on this power distribution networks a brief overview okay so i talked about uh, the substation design and i'll continue to that and then uh, we'll also discuss this feeder topologies power losses and voltage drop computations okay so in my last uh, lecture i uh, started discussion on uh, different bus bar arrangement systems uh, which is used in a typical uh, substation outdoor type of substation okay and i uh, discuss this uh, simplest one that is single bus bar arrangement single bus bar arrangement this is a very simple system we have a one incoming line this is incoming line this is incoming line okay and this is basically uh, charging this bus okay this is the bus from where uh, these feeders individual feeders are going out and they are basically supplying to the individual loads okay so these are the individual feeder so these are these feeders okay and they are connected to the individual loads with uh, distribution transformer which again transforms or step down the voltage level to the utilization voltage level okay so this is a very simple uh, type of bus bar arrangement single bus bar arrangement and uh, this control uh, and protection logic is very simple to devise for this type of arrangement okay but there is a drawback like there is no redundancy if there is any fault in any part of this incoming line or if I uh, want to do maintenance for the circuit breaker, then the whole circuit will be de-energized and this whole circuit will be the out of service. So, none of the feeders will be energized because uh, this bus will be de-energized. Okay? So, if we need any maintenance of that particular breaker, then we need to take the total outage of this. Uh, substation and none of these feeders will be getting power or will be energized uh, in that particular case. So, that is why there is no redundancy whole substation will be out of service uh, when there is a any fault in power transformer. Power transformer of, of course, is connected somewhere here. So, if there is any fault in this power transformer or this incoming breaker, then uh, obviously, the whole uh, substation will be out of service. Okay? And also, if there is any fault in that particular bus bar, then also all these feeders need to be taken out edge. So, there is no other way possible, so that we can keep these feeders energized. We, there is no other possible option, uh, so that we can keep these feeders energized. Okay? Now, in order to alleviate this, we have this uh, single bus bar arrangement with bus sectionalizer okay and there are two ta power transformers this is one power transformer this is another power transformer these are two power transformers and their functionalities are same they are basically step down so here we have this uh, sub transmission line here we have this sub transmission line sub transmission line okay then we have this power transformer which step down the voltage to the distribution level voltage then we have this uh, circuit breakers uh, each uh, to to energize these two buses so here basically there is only one bus and this bus is sectionalized with another breaker which is called bus sectionalizer so, this breaker is basically bus sectionalizer. Okay? And this breaker is normally open. So, this breaker is normally open. So, that this is uh, will be this will be acted as a individual bus and this also will be acted as an individual bus. Okay. Now, as compared to this previous arrangement that is single bus bar system, you can see here we are having only one bus, but which is splitted into two parts by, by using this bus sectionalizer and this bus sectionalizer is normally open switch that, that means initially it will be kept off. Okay. Now, 
what is the advantage of this? We have of course, higher redundancy meaning that if there is any fault in this transformer or in this breaker, then of course, we can disconnect this circuit breaker and we can isolate uh, this, this unit from the service. At this condition, we can switch on this breaker, we can turn on this breaker, we can first uh, turn on the isolator, then we will uh, make this breaker con uh, through or uh, we will make this breaker through and then we can supply thereby you can see if we make this breaker through that means, uh, this bus is getting connected with that bus and then if uh, this rating of the power transformer permits you can supply all these feeders connected to that bus from this par particular transformer. It's meaning that we can bring power uh, through this transformer through this bus sectionalizer to that feeders, these feeders provided that the total load demand of these feeders along with the total load demand of this feeder summation of all this load demand of all these feeders uh, do not exceed this you know uh, transformer rating. Okay. So, under this condition you can keep uh, this, this feeders energized So that is what the advantage that is why it is having better reliability, okay, better op operational flexibility. So, if there is any sort of fault happens in this power transformer or in this breaker, if any sort of faults occur then you can isolate either this section or that section and do for go for uh, maintenance and thereby uh, you keep this uh, bus sectionalizer on and uh, you make this circuit. So, that you can bring power from the other transformer. Okay. So, that is why uh, so fault in, in the bus bar would be limited to one section only. Okay. Now, there is another advantage is that if there, any, there is any bus bar fault, bus bar fault means if there is any uh, you know uh, fault in that either of this bus of this bus or this bus suppose there is any fault in this bus then uh, only this portion of the feeders or these many feeders whoever is connected to that particular bus will be affected but here all other feeders which are connected to the other bus will never get affected uh, on the contrary you can see here since we have a single bus bar arrangement if there is any fault in this particular bus bar all the feeders will be affected they will be having outage. Okay. So, this is one of the advantages, but of course, these drawbacks is that if, if you have some advantage some uh, this will uh, be uh, the cost of something else. So, here we have this higher investment cost, we have uh, difficulty in paralleling this power transformer. Uh, particularly uh, devising the control logic is concerned, we also have higher no load losses as compared to one transformer because two transformer means there would be um, more, more amount of no load if you add up this no load losses. So, that would be obviously higher. Okay. Now, we have another scheme that is called single bus bar arrangement with a transfer bus. So, here we have one bus that is main bus okay, uh, and all the feeders are connected to the main bus with a uh, circuit breaker. Okay. So, these are the incomers to charge this uh, particular main bus and there is another bus which is called transfer bus which is normally not energized which is normally uh, de-energized. Okay. Now, these are the outgoing feeders and these are the circuit breaker of the corresponding feeders. So, normally uh, this circuit breaker is kept on or the circuit breaker makes this circuit and these feeders they get supply through this path. Okay. So, similarly this feeder this feed, this this is one outgoing feeder or uh, this is one outgoing feeder, this is also outgoing feeders. So, so, they get energized through their corresponding uh, circuit breaker like this. So, this feeder is getting energized through this circuit breaker, this feeder is getting energized through this circuit breaker and so on. Okay. So, under normal conditions that is how uh, these feeders are energized. 
Okay. Now, there is another uh, you know uh, bus which is as I said this uh, transfer bus. Now, what is the role of this transfer bus? This transfer bus is only used if you need any sort of maintenance required of any particular feeder breaker. Suppose, I uh, for this particular uh, feeder, this is the circuit breaker which makes the circuit and I need to have any maintenance of that breaker or I need to off this breaker. Then uh, you need not to de-energize the whole feeder. Okay. You even that case also you can keep uh, this uh, power supply off with the corresponding feeder intact. In fact, in the previous two schemes there is no options. Uh, suppose, if they we need to have uh, any sort of maintenance required of that feeder, we have to simply de-energize this uh, feeder loads and we need to do uh, maintenance and uh, thereby uh, this this during these times these loads will be out of service okay but uh, in fact in the previous also uh, these schemes also if i need to have any maintenance of that feeder we do not have any options left to keep this feeder loads energized okay but here in this particular arrangement that is single break bus bar arrangement with transfer bus even if we need any maintenance required for this particular feeder, we can keep that feeder energized. How? In that case, we will isolate this circuit with this isolators and there is a bus tie breaker, which is uh, basically used to charge this transfer bus from the main bus. So, we, what we will do? We will make this uh, you know uh, bus tie breaker on. Basically, this bus tie breaker is normally off. Uh, but whenever we need any maintenance required the corresponding feeder circuit breaker, we need uh, to energize this uh, transfer bus through this bus tie breaker. And if you uh, prior to that we need to switch on this isolator and thereby we can transfer the power of that particular feeder uh, through this path, through this path. See, if uh, this is this is the circuit breaker corresponding to that particular feeder, this circuit breaker is under maintenance till that particular feeder is getting supply through this transfer bus and tie breaker arrangement. Okay. And that is what uh, the advantage of this particular scheme. So, individual feeders circuit breaker can go for maintenance, but that does not interrupt that uh, loads connected to that particular feeder. Okay. So, this is what the advantage is. So, maintenance on one circuit breaker does not cause any interruption, but there are drawbacks as I said whenever you make some uh, sophisticated uh, arrangement you need to pay more. So, higher investment cost and whole substation would be out of service in case of bus bar fault. If there is any fault in the main bus there is no other way to keep this uh, circuit energized. So, whole substation will be out of service. Also protection and auto reclosing circuits have to be switched over to the bus coupler way during a transfer situation. So, this protection is bit complicated as compared to the simplest form of the protection scheme which is the single bus bar scheme. Okay. Now, next is double bus bar scheme, double bus bar arrangement. Here we have two buses, one is bus 1 and another is bus 2. Okay. We, have, we have two buses instead of a uh, single main bus, we have two main buses. Okay. Now, any of these feeders, these are the, you, you know, these are these uh, feeders, outgoing feeders, which are connected to the different loads. Now, any of these feeders uh, can be connected to any of these buses. Okay. So, when we will connect this, this particular feeder to this bus 1, then you simply uh, switch on the isolators first okay. and then you uh, make the circuit by this uh, charging the circuit breaker and thereby you get power from this bus 1. Okay. So, this is very simple and also you can uh, in similar way you can uh, get the power from the bus 2. In that case, you have to uh, prior to the switching of the circuit breaker, you have to switch on this isolators and then 
uh, you would make the circuit uh, through this charging this breaker and then this uh, feeder will be connected to bus 2 and it will get power from the bus 2. Okay. So, this is somewhat simple arrangement, but we have required two bus bars for that and there is a bus tie breaker which, which connects these two bus bar. Okay. The advantage is that we have operational flexibility effect of a particular bus bar is limited if there is any fault in any bus bar uh, then uh, you can uh, get the uh, power from the other bus and substation extension is also possible under service. Okay. So, you can go for this extension for another feeders uh, through this any of the buses keeping that bus uncharged, okay. Be keeping the bus uncharged. But uh, there are drawbacks like complicated interlocking system uh, and whole bay will be out of service when circuit breaker is under maintenance. That means, that problem which was there for single bus bar arrangement or uh, you know uh, bus bar with bus sectionalizer arrangement, here also that problem is there if you need to have any sort of maintenance required for that particular uh, breaker then of course, there is no other way to uh, keep the feeder corresponding feeder energized. So, if I need to go for maintenance of that particular circuit breaker, I have to definitely keep this line uncharged. Okay. I need to you know power curtailment of whole this load connected to that particular feeders for during that uh, maintenance period. Okay. So, there is no other way that this uh, feeder will get supply from uh, uh, other options uh, during this maintenance period of that particular breaker. Okay. This is one of the disadvantages. Now, we have double breaker arrangement. Okay. In that case, uh, we have two breakers to make one feeder. That means, this particular feeder is either can be energized with this breaker or can be that breaker and this can be energized either by this bus or by that bus. In fact, in previous one we had only one breaker to energize of one particular feeder from this you know two buses, okay. but here to energize this particular feeder we have two options, we have two circuit breakers one can be connected to this bus to another can get to power from the bus one. Okay. Now, here the advantage is that if uh, there is any fault in this bus bar or any fault in that particular uh, circuit breaker, then during that time this particular feeders they will definitely get power from this bus to through this particular breakers. Okay. So, there is no problem at all. So, breaker maintenance is not a problem, bus bar fault is not a problem for this particular arrangement. Okay. So, bus bar fault is not a problem, breaker maintenance is not a problem and substation extension is also possible by keeping one bus uncharged. You can go for uh, extension uh, of that particular uh, bus connected to new feeders, okay. but again uh, these drawbacks are high investment cost which is obvious that one feeder needs two breakers. This is primarily because one feeder needs two breakers. Okay. So, obviously, this will increase the cost. Previous all this example you can see one feeder corresponds to one particular uh, circuit breaker, here also one uh, breaker corresponding to one particular circuit breaker, but of course, we have additional bus tie breaker here also one feeder connected to one particular breaker, okay. but here uh, one feeder is connected to two breakers, one is this, one is that, one is this, one is that. So, obviously, uh, the cost will be increased and also protection system would be complicated. There is another system called ring bus system, which creates a ring, which creates a ring with a number of circuit breakers connected like this, this is one breaker, this is another breaker, this is another breaker and so on. Now, uh, here all these lines are connected in this uh, particular uh, sections like this, okay, in like this arrangement that is why it is called a ring breaker 
and one particular line can be energized from either of this breaker or by making this breaker. Okay. So, this is possible and here also if you have if you need uh, maintenance of any sort of breaker then simply uh, this there will be no interruption of any feeder. So, I need to do the maintenance of that feeder uh, of that breaker. So, I could simply uh, disconnect this feeder and this will not interrupt the whole circuit because this will just uh, break the loop and this will keep all the lines energized. Okay. So, that is what the advantage. So, here uh, low initial uh, cost is there, but flexible operation of the breaker maintenance is possible. Any breaker can be moved for maintenance without interrupting any load as I was talking about requires only one breaker for circuit, but they can be due to this ring arrangement as if uh, they are connected to two breakers uh, side by side and each circuit is fed by two breakers. Uh, and due to this arrangement you know, uh, you, know uh, you can see that uh, we have as many breakers as the lines 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 uh, breakers are used for these uh, 6 lines. But as due to this loop connection only uh, each circuit can be fed by two breakers. Okay. So, here uh, it is not the fact that we have two breakers corresponding to one particular feeder, but still uh, due to that particular arrangement uh, one feeder can get supply from two breakers. Okay. Now, what are the drawbacks? If a fault occurs during this breaker maintenance period that means suppose if uh, the we are going um, for maintenance of that particular breaker at that particular instant there is any fault in any bus or maybe in any uh, uh, breaker or we need some urgent maintenance of another breaker then it would be difficult uh, to to energize some of the to keep the some of the feeders energized so but this situation is obviously a uh, very uh, somewhat rare situation that you can understand. So, this is one thing and also another thing is that complicated protection arrangement. Now, finally, we have another popular scheme which is called breaker and a half scheme, breaker and a half. This is very popular and this is used in many of the substations uh, in India. Okay. What is that scheme? In that scheme, you can see we have three breakers uh, corresponding to two lines. Uh, so, that means, we have this is one particular feeder, suppose this is feeder and this is another particular feeder. Okay. Now, these two feeders can be uh, kept energized by these three breakers. Okay. So, that is why you know, uh, so we need three circuit breakers. for two feeders. So, for one feeder for one feeder how many circuit breakers we require actually it will be 3 by 2 so arithmetic so that is 1.5 that is why it is called a breaker and half scheme. Okay. So, we need three breakers to keep energization of two feeders. Okay. Now, generally you can understand that this tie breaker is kept off and there are two buses that is bus 1 and bus 2 and this particular feeder it is getting supplied by this particular circuit breaker from bus 1 like this. Similarly, this particular feeder it is getting energized from bus 2 through this particular feeder. Okay. This is under normal condition, okay. but if there is any sort of fault for example, this there is a bust fault at this bus 1. Okay. Then also this particular feeder can be energized from this bus 2 via this particular tie breaker. In that case you can bring power of that particular feeder through this route and you keep this uh, you know feeder or line energized. Okay. This is uh, possible and that is why it is reliability point of view it is a better option. Okay. Similarly, if there is any bus bar fault at bus 2 
where what we can do? We can uh, keep this both the feeders which is connected here and connected here energized uh, from this bus 1 by using this tie breakers provided that uh, this tie breakers capacity does not exceed. Okay. So, total power flow does not exceed the breaker capacity. So, this you have to ensure and then only it is possible to keep uh, both the feeders energized under any sort of bus fault conditions. Also, if there uh, is any uh, requirement of any uh, maintenance of any of the breakers, for example, I need to have maintenance this particular breaker. So, I can put it uh, de-energized and in that case also by charging this uh, tie breaker, uh, I can bring power corresponding to that feeder. So, bus bar fault is not a problem, breaker maintenance is not a problem. Okay. So, this will not create any problem uh, for this particular scheme, okay. so which is mentioned over here flexible operation, higher reliability, breaker failure does not have any problem, bus bar failure does not have a, any uh, problem for any feeder, okay. but the drawback is again we need one and half breakers per circuit. So, per feeder we need 1.5 breakers more than one breaker which is more costly. Okay. Also, this as I said many times that uh, protection arrangement would be also complicated. Okay. Now, we will come to this primary distribution network topology. So, from this point onward we are slowly moving uh, away from the substation. So, far my discussion was limited to the substation only. So, as I said substation is our gateway substation is our feeding point or it is the beginning of a distribution network okay, from where you know ne distribution network starts. Okay. So, I discussed about whatever is required for the substation. Okay. Now, here in the successive slides I will discuss basically some aspect of primary uh, distribution feeders. Okay. The primary distribution networks are mostly of radial, okay, which results in unidirectional flow of power. So, it is of radial, how what do you mean by this radial topology? I will come to that in my next slide. Okay. Now, why this radial topology is preferred? Because of this advantage that unidirectional flow of power, this is the biggest advantage, this is the biggest advantage and due to which you know we choose uh, radial operation of uh, primary distribution network even if you have the flexibility of uh, keeping it in loop. Okay. Because this unidirectional flow of power it uh, makes this uh, com, uh, protection coordination very very easy very very uncomplicated. Okay. Now, this radial topology is preferred for its simplicity in construction cost effectiveness and protection arrangement. So, this is the advantages of this radial topology. Okay. So, it is the simplest form of this network uh, and it is preferred particularly in distribution networks for the simplicity in construction, cost effectiveness, it is for economy it is the best option and also the uh, less complicated protection, in fact very simple protection arrangement. Okay. But, the reliability is poor uh, for uh, this you know radial topology as compared to the loop topology, I will come to that, I will have some uh, single line diagram in which I will explain why it is so. Okay. And loop topology is only used for large cities and metropolitan cities which demand uh, more reliable power, but uh, mostly in rural areas and most part of the country distribution networks even if uh, small cities and even if uh, cities also you know we have the uh, radial uh, distribution network uh, radial topology of distribution network. And sometimes uh, this distribution networks as I said even they are uh, having loop topology, but they are operating as open loop. Okay. So, why they are operating as open loop? Because open loop means it is eventually a radial network. Okay. So, even though you have the flexibility of this loop uh, you know topology, it is operated as radial. Okay. So, this is called open loop configuration. 
Okay. Open loop configuration means loop topology, loop topology, but radial operation. Okay. Now, this is the single line diagram of a single feeder radial topology. So, this is a single line diagram. of a three phase radial radial feeder ok. So, as I said that uh, in power system in the very beginning uh, I, I mentioned that we, we analyze the circuit considering the single uh, line diagram and this is a single line diagram also although it is a three phase network although it is a three phase circuit. Okay. So, here you can see it is our the gateway of this network it is the beginning of our network that is the substation and beyond that uh, we have this uh, you know power transformer we have uh, this power transformer and we have the substation line those things we will not consider particularly analyzing of this radial feeder, but uh, we will start from this radial feeder analysis from the substation. Substation is our uh, gateway it is the uh, beginning you can say uh, for a radial feeder. Okay. This is all in fact all other uh, nodal point either we can consider them as a uh, bus or node. Uh, so, in distribution system generally uh, this bus is uh, bus is not the terminology we use, we use node to represent different nodal point of a network. Okay. So, this is uh, this substation since it is the beginning. So, this is you can consider as node 1 or bus 1 both are having same meaning this is the circuit breaker which is making this uh, feeder energized okay and then this long line is basically a three phase distribution line so this is basically a three phase distribution line either uh, you know overhead line or underground cable whichever options is possible so, this is basically three phase distribution lines which is also called trunk feeder or main feeder okay. so, which is also called trunk feeder and main feeder and it is connected to different nodal points with different laterals. So, these are basically lateral feeders. So, this is one lateral this is another lateral similarly this is another lateral this is another lateral and so on. So, a, a typical distribution feeder feeder consist of consist of a uh, main feeder a main feeder along with a number of laterals sometimes they are called laterals feeders okay a number of laterals you can you can see this is the main feeder and these are the laterals okay now these are the different other nodes marked with node 2 node 3 node 4 node 5 node 6 beyond which what we have we have this distribution these are all distribution transformers and from where all these loads are are getting supplied. Okay. Now, these are the distribution transformer, okay. uh, these are the distribution transformer. distribution transformer whose primary uh, responsibility is to uh, convert uh, this distribution voltage level to the utilization voltage level which is uh, required by the customers. 
So, this distribution transformer they convert they step down further this distribution voltage level uh, to the uh, utilization voltage level. In India uh, uh, you know they convert this uh, typical 11 kV uh, distribution network to 400 volt uh, utilization voltage. From higher if it is a single page customer they will get 400 divided by root 3 that much of uh, 220 volt single page or maybe 400 volt uh, 3 phase supply. Okay. Now, this this symbol is shows uh, this symbol shows this fuge okay, uh, which is the protection uh, arrangement uh, for this particular transformer. If there is any fault beyond that this fuse may blown out uh, may blow out and uh, isolate the distribution transformer. So, that there will be no problem in for the rest of the circuit to operate. Okay. Now, uh, one another thing important thing is that under this particular feeder this is basically the feeder this is basically called feeder service area. And whoever uh, customer is located under this particular service area the feeder should supply the feeder should supply to that those customers. So, under this particular service area uh, whichever load are there they are all connected to this particular feeder. Okay. This is the traditional approach and if you look at this radial topology then how this power will flow? The power flow will be unidirectional power will flow let us say uh, starting from the substation to the individual distribution transformer and then we have these loads like this. So, power will flow unidirectionally starting from the substation towards the load. Okay. So, everywhere you will get unidirectional flow of power unidirectional flow of power okay. and you can see later on I will also analyze this uh, type of feeder in, in more detail that uh, here of course, uh, whatever current will flow that current will consist uh, the you know uh, power demand or load demand of all these loads connected. So, this particular breaker it is uh, experiencing the power flow uh, which is some of the um, uh, all the power demand of all the customers who are connected to that and apart from that we have also line losses. Through this we have all these customers connected and this current which is flowing through this particular uh, breaker which is summation of all this uh, you know load current, but apart from that we have some losses. So, that we need to consider. Now, this one is shown is a single feeder unit. Okay. Uh, we in general as you have seen in the bus bar arrangement we have multiple number of feeders typically in a under a particular distribution substation. So, here in this figure you can see multi feeder distribution networks multi feeder distribution networks. So, this box is showing the service area of one particular feeder or this feeder 2. Okay. This uh, one is basically this feeder 1 and which is going out and this is another feeder. Okay. So, this is feeder 3 actually this is feeder 3 and this is feeder 1. So, this is feeder f 1 this is f 2 this is F 3 where F 1 represents this feeder 1 which serve this uh, load okay. uh, feeder which is not shown in that particular figure. Similarly, this feeder 3 which is used to serve the power demand of the loads which is connected at the right hand side. So, this is the service area of feeder 3. So, feeder 3 service area which is not shown here. Similarly, here this is the service area of feeder 1, feeder 1 service area and this rectangular box is representing the service area of feeder 2. Okay. Now, we have two important concepts here which are uh, basically this sectionalizer or sectionalizing switch and tie lines. So, these are two important concepts uh, 
one need to understand their usefulness. Okay. So, here we have these three feeders and these are the three service areas. This is service area of feeder 1, this is service area of feeder 2 and this is service area of feeder 3. Now, inside their service area we have as you can see a number of laterals connected to the main, this is the main feeder, uh, this is the main feeder which is connected to a number of laterals uh, and uh, number of nodal points, number of nodes etcetera. And also each node is associated with one particular distribution transformer which is basically provided the utilization voltage of the loads. Okay. Now, as I said we have an important concept at this point one is sectionalizing switch another is tie lines. Now, what is the function of sectionalizing switch? These are the sectionalizing switch this is one sectionalizer this is another sectionalizer. Okay this is another sectionalizer. So, a sectionalizer is basically sectionalizes the whole circuit into different uh, sections. Okay. A typical feeder for example, uh, this feeder is having number of sections. Okay. So, what is the role of this sectionalizer switch? They are normally closed switch and they are like isolators, they do not operate on load condition rather they operate off load condition. Okay. So, what is the function of this sectionalizer? This sectionalizer can be operated if there are any fault in that particular section. For example, if there is any fault in this particular section, then uh, we can open this particular sectionalizer or if there is any fault in this particular section, we can open this sectionalizer and thereby we can uh, remove this faulty part from the circuit and we can keep the circuit energized again and then uh, this faulty part would be under maintenance. Okay. Now, this is the uh, basic function of the sectionalizer. They sectionalize a particular feeder into number of sections. They are normally closed switch, they are like isolators, they are op operated off load conditions and uh, whenever there is any fault corresponding to that particular sectionalizer we can disconnect this sectionalizer thereby disconnecting this faulty part from the circuit and the rest of the circuit can be energized thereby they improve the reliability. Okay. So, this you have to understand. Similarly, these tie lines they basically provide some tie from one feeder to another feeder. So, this tie line is making a tie of this feeder 2 to feeder 3. So, this is uh, a tie line or tie switch uh, between uh, this F 2 and F 3. Similarly, these two are the tie switches uh, between F 1 and F 2. They are normally off switch, they are normally open switch, a no switch. Okay. So, they are normally open and when they are normally open, they are both the feeders are operated in radial. If the you close that, then probably radiality will be lost. Okay. Now, what is the usefulness of this tie line? If there is any fault in any sort of any uh, particular feeder of this F 2, okay, any section of this F 2, then sometimes it is not possible to keep the rest of the part energized, even though uh, you have this option of sectionalizer. Okay. So, under this condition we will keep this tie switches on and we can bring power via this feeder 3 or alternatively in that arrangement we are connecting some of the loads of this feeder 2 to feeder 3 okay. and thereby we are keeping these loads energized. Okay. So, tie switch will be operated uh, when there is not possible by operation of the sectionalizer to keep most of the part of the circuit remain healthy. Okay. During that time you can get the you can connect some of the sections of one feeder to the another feeder through this uh, tie line arrangement. Okay. So, they will uh, uh, make it. So, during this uh, my uh, discussion on reliability in module 3 I will discuss this in more detail, but the basic purpose of both the uh, switches are uh, they are uh, one is normally closed switch another is normally open switch they will be operated to improve the reliability of the circuit or reliability of the network. Okay. This is another possible network topology which is loop 
topology and there are some switches like loop tie disconnect switch. If you connect this then only uh, this will be operated as loop, but if you disconnect this then this part will be operated as radial, this part is also operated as radial, but if you connect this loop switch they will be operated is loop. So, that is basically uh, this loop tie disconnect switch is for open loop operation of loop topology, open loop operation of loop topology. Okay. So, the basic function of this loop tie disconnect switch is for open loop operation of loop uh, topology, they are uh, normally open switch and if you close it then this can be operated in the loop condition. Now, why they are normally open switch because to have a radial operation. So, open loop operation is nothing but a radial operation, radial operation. You can see if this loop tie switch is kept off, uh, it is open, then this part will be open of uh, you know. Uh, it will this this will be op operated in radial this part will be operated in radial okay now next we will go for uh, some important concepts like uh, voltages voltage rating of this uh, primary distribution network how do we decide that what should be the voltage rating of a typical distribution network should we go for 11 kb should we go for 33 kb or more okay that basically depends on the two important factors one is permissible voltage drop and also one is permissible power loss permissible power loss okay so these are two important limiting criteria for deciding that what should be the length of the feeder and what should be the uh, voltage rating of the feeder. Normally, we keep 11 kb, a higher uh, voltage uh, distribution network is also possible which needs some uh, more investment, okay. this will be costlier. Okay. Normally, in power uh, primary feeders located in high load density areas, uh, for example, industrial and commercial areas in uh, large cities or metropolitan cities, they are restricted by thermal limitation. What do you mean by thermal limitation? This thermal limitation is basically, this thermal limitation is basically uh, this uh, a limit uh, of the uh, particular distribution line based on the conductor size. This thermal limitation is the limit based on conductor size. Okay. So, there is one limit based on the conductor size that every conductor have some current carrying capacity, sometimes we call it ampacity, uh, sometimes we call it ampacity, A ampacity means A m p correspond to ampere then capacity that is called ampacity limit. So, this is basically decided upon the uh, size of the particular conductor. And for high load density areas, this limiting factor is their thermal limit, because in those distribution networks, these distribution lines are heavily loaded, they carry more amount of current. So, that uh, the limiting criteria is the thermal limit, that is the ampacity limit. But for rural areas, uh, where we have low load density, this uh, rural areas, where each of the line is not much loaded. In those areas, the limiting criteria are permissible voltage drop. Okay, permissible voltage drop. Okay, now there is a thumb rule that which is called voltage square rule. That means if you go for uh, increase in the voltage, then uh, keeping the same voltage drop as a criteria, you can provide uh, the you can uh, make the circuit four times longer, four times longer. Okay. So, I have an example here. Okay. So, this is uh, a thumb rule, although this is a thumb rule, which is uh, basically distance ratio multiplied by load ratio is voltage square factor. So, if you go for uh, you know 
uh, 11 kb if you go for upgradation of uh, 11 kb to 33 kb that means uh, here in the numerator will be 33 denominator will be 11 so this will be squared so that means 9 so 9 would be the uh, you know distance ratio multiplied by load ratio now what is distance ratio distance ratio is basically ratio of the new distance to the old distance that means this distance stands for the length of the feeder length of the feeder okay so this distance ratio is basically the ratio of the length of the feeder for a new voltage level network and old voltage level network similarly load ratio is also the ratio of the new feeder loading to the old feeder loading okay now if you keep this load ratio same load ratio 1 that means i want to keep this uh, number of loads same for new feeder which is having up 11 kb uh, sorry 33 kb similar to this uh, 11 kb network then as if you can increase the length of the feeder to 9 times uh, as compared to the 11 kb network okay so keeping this load ratio same load ratio same means i will keep the same loading same num amount of load uh, for 11 kb network and upgraded 33 kb network under that, that condition you can have the flexibility to increase the feeder length uh, to the 9 times of the actual length of the feeder similarly if we uh, keep the distance ratio constant meaning that uh, i will keep the length of the feeder constant for both the cases one is 11 kb another is 33 kb okay and in that condition uh, i can supply 9 times more load as compared to the 11 kb network in 33 kb network okay so this is a thumb rule one should uh, understand how this you know uh, uh, this voltage upgradation will impact this whole circuit operation okay so with this i'll stop today thank you